Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jessica and today we're starting week three of the Stargazer Quilts Along. And this week our assignment is to make all the flying geese that we need for our star block, shown right here. For these flying geese, we're gonna be doing the stitch and flip method. Now I already have a tutorial on my channel here for stitch and flip flying geese, so this is gonna be much the same as that video, but let's walk through it step by step together. First, let me just tell you how I have my machine set up. The foot that I'm using is Bernina Foot 34D. I like this one. It's called a clear reverse pattern foot. So it's a standard for reverse pattern foot, um, but it has a clear sole and it has different uh, markings on it to help you when you're piecing. So I have that foot on. And the way this first red line in the center here, that lines up with the needle and that also lines up with the first line that I have drawn on my sewing machine. Now, if you haven't seen these lines before, if this is the first time you're here, I'll link below to the video where I talked about what I did with these lines. I also am using my straight stitch needle plate. So whenever I'm piecing a quilt, I'm using my straight stitch needle plate. That helps prevent the fabric from being pulled down here as you sew. So it just kind of glides across the top, which is perfect, and it makes it really easy to piece. I have the pieces that we need, one rectangle and two squares. And so when you're piecing these flying geese, I choose to do them with no lines drawn. I use the markings on my machine bed and the markings by my needle to sew accurately from this top corner to this bottom corner. If you were struggling doing that, you could take a ruler and you could do it with any, um, it doesn't matter of the increments on the ruler, you just need a straight edge here. What you would do is you would line your ruler up from the top corner to the bottom corner and then you would just draw a line here. I always find that a mechanical pencil is much better for this than a traditional lead pencil because um, this point is a lot finer and you can get a really accurate line. Sometimes if you have a regular pencil, this can get really fat if it's not perfectly sharpened and when you draw it, it bumps your line out further than it should be. So I always like to use mechanical pencils if I'm going to draw those lines. And then what would happen if you drew the line is you would just sew on the line. But if you're not going to draw the line, I get the top corner right under my needle and I line this bottom corner up with this line here on my sewing machine. And then I just sew from that top corner to this bottom corner. I keep that bottom corner right on. And you're left with something that looks like this. So when you flip this down, it's going to replace the corner here. We're gonna cut this away and you're going to have half of your flying geese unit. Now, um, you could choose to trim this with a ruler and a rotary cutter, or you could just come in quickly with scissors and just trim this away. This is what I usually do, um, but it's really just a matter of preference. Both things yield the same results. So now we have half of our unit. To get the other half, we kind of just repeat the same thing on the other side. So I lay my square so that it's matching on all sides. And we're going to sew from this corner to this corner. And I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to get that right under my needle. Then I'm going to just stop for a second. And I just pivot to make sure this corner is on that straight line. And I just sew along here. And I'm going to cut it. That's what it looks like then. Now I do not press my flying geese. I don't press much of much of any parts of my block while I'm making it. I like to do it at the end. Um, but you certainly could press at either step. You could press when you get all the one side done, then you can come back and press for the other side. You can um, really just whatever way you want is just fine. As long as you're getting good results for you, then that's all that matters. So here is our stitch and flip flying geese unit. And we need quite a few of these. So what I would recommend when you're making these is chain piece all the one sides and just chain piece those all through. So I have another one here to make. Um, but what I would do is I would get all my squares or half of my squares and all of my rectangles and I would chain piece. I would start by piecing this through and then I wouldn't stop. I wouldn't cut the thread. I would piece the next one through and the next one through and the next one through and then when they're done 
cut your thread and you'd snip between each of the units like you'd snip here between so you each have separate units then you can either rotary cut and roller um, this edge off or you can cut it with scissors and then I would get the other half of my squares come back to the sewing machine and then sew this way and hold on, I'm not under there there we go and then I would sew this side and I would chain piece all of the second side as well chain piece them all through cut them and then you'll cut in between all of them and then you'll trim these whether by scissor or by rotary cutter and then you'll be left with all of your flying geese units that you need for this week so that's the assignment this week all of the flying geese if you have any questions on making these just let me know leave your questions in the comments and i'll be sure to answer thanks for following along and i'll see you back here next week when we continue on with the quilt along